Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Ebbett and today I'm talking about painting and modelling a mountainside. So you can see the model I've made here. This is for Atlas Empires and it's called The Outpost. You can see more videos in the playlist in the description. I've got playlists on making game models for mobile games and basics to texture painting. It's also worth noting that I'm using a graphics tablet, I'm in fact using a display tablet and I've got more information in the links in the description about those. For this video I have speeded up the footage to 300% so it's not too quick and I should be able to give you a detailed rundown of what I'm doing. And remember there's lots of links in the description for aspects that you might find helpful. So first of all I started off in sculpt mode. I thought that's the easiest way just to block out a shape of a sort of cliffside or mountainside or whatever this structure is. And you can see I'm just using the grab brush and uh, smoothing out. Then I go to the crease brush to sort of etch in some boulders and cliff parts, whatever you call them, <laughs> the sticky out bits basically. And that really helps to sharpen up the areas, I'm obviously holding down the control key at the moment so it sticks out rather than pushes in. I don't really change the brush settings too much. I'm trying to scrape peak brush here at the moment as well. You don't get a lot of joy from this if you haven't got a lot of topology, but there's no real need for me to have it. I'm just getting a really basic shape and basic outline. Because it has to follow a structure, as you can see in the top right hand corner there, it's got a specific shape that I have to keep to, so I'm trying to mimic that as close as possible. What I will be doing shortly is decimating the model anyway, so it's not too important. It's just getting a rough shape, and I find sculpting's really helpful for that. It gives a sort of an organic feel. If I box model this, I think it would take a lot longer, and I don't think it would be as natural looking. I try lots of different brushes just uh, to experiment, really. I like to learn something new when I'm uh, doing every piece of work, and just try different brushes that I might not use much. But I'm back to the crease brush here, and then the scrape P peak brush here as well. So trying to get some of the finer details out now. Not that it's too important at the moment, because like I say, this will be decimated. But the decimate modifier does pick up those little bits here and there. So I'm just getting the rough scale now, so I've gone back into object mode, scaled it up, uh, just to make sure that I'm happy. And then I position it in the correct space. Bisect tool to cut it up, but I couldn't find it. I can't remember where it is in 2.8 now, so I'll have to look that up. But I just looked it up with F3 and found it that way. So I've got a nice flat bottom and I'm ready for decimating. So with the decimation modifier, put it down really low, had a look, and this is very low poly, remember, so it's going very low, as you can see there, at 0 0.01 or something crazy like that, it seems. And then it does take a bit of tidying up at this point. You can see that there's points that are really close to each other, and I never find they work particularly well, both when you're texture painting and when you're looking at the normals and things like that. You can sometimes see seams and things, so you have to be a bit careful. So just going around, sorting out the shape, making sure I've got some nice peaks to work with and uh, that there's sort of little plateaus around the place. Trying not to disturb the base, of course, because that's nice and flat, so I'll not want to move any of those base uh, vertices at all. So just a basic tidy up, getting the shape back, and I found that process a bit quicker than actually box modeling this shape, uh, just sculpting it out and then moving it into position like this. You could do it either way, it's just I prefer the sculpting method. I think I'm more an arty type person than a techie type person in that sense. Just scaling up a bit, making sure I'm really happy with the shape, uh, having a good look around. Spent a lot of time just looking at it, making sure I was happy. And then just adjusting the shape really slightly here and there. I've actually sped this bit up a bit more because I was just looking around for ages, making sure I was happy, moving things around, and that's a little bit dull. Also, I sped this bit up, which is just making a few of the models, making sure I was happy with uh, the position of my mountain with the models. So I thought I'd leave this in because you'll see um, the sort of doorway and the actual outpost tower. So it won't look odd to you when you see them in there in a moment. 
but you can see a bit of how I made this. I will put the whole video up um, with some time lapse at another point, so look out for links in the description for that as well. So I've modeled most of the bits now and I'm ready for painting. So I start off the basic painting structure that I always have. So if you want to find out more about that, then look at the links in the description. But I always start off just blobbing in, as I call it, uh, some base colors. And you can see here that I'm just dabbing on different variations of colors, not too strong. So it's very close to the middle there of the color wheel. So they're not very saturated and it's a very low strength. The next thing I do is then start painting in my lines. It's a bit like you're sketching, and when you're sketching, you just sort of paint in the shadows. And that's the first thing I do. I get where the shadows are, and that gives me the outline of my bricks and blocks and uh, stones and things. Uh, so I'm just getting a rough shape. I'm trying to follow the feeling of the actual shape itself. So I'm not just randomly putting them around the place, but when there's a dent, I'll paint some shading in, and where there's a highlight, eventually I'll come around to the highlights, which is exactly what I'm doing here. I'll paint in some highlights. So on the ridges, you paint in nice and light. For the dents, you paint in nice and dark. So it's fairly straightforward and methodical, a bit like paint by numbers at the moment. Uh, but I suppose the trick and skill is starting to think how a mountainside, uh, cliff side looks, or rocky outpost thing. <laughs> I'm trying not to go too far with the details yet, but I just want to test out a few details as you can see there, uh, see where they might go, how they might fit in. It's always a tricky bit. You shouldn't go too detailed too early because you're obviously going to end up rubbing bits out and adding bits in and you'll end up losing your detail. Uh, but deciding when to go to that next detail level can often be quite a challenge. You can probably see the kind of structure I'm going for here. I've got lots of reference images on my other screen, uh, but it's that sort of liney, bricky work. And you can see the final outcome at the bottom there. So again, just going around, adding in some shading, and it's slowly starting to come together. You can already see that it looks a bit rocky. It's not great at the moment and it's early days, but you can see that sort of rocky feel. Where there's a crevice, you often get a, a highlight next to it. I probably went a bit overboard with some of these highlights, uh, but uh, when there's a small crevice, uh, there's usually a, a peak next to it, right next to it, uh, that catches the light. Uh, so I'm painting those in around those areas, making sure there's not any big areas of uh, just blankness in my shape. It's really important that you keep moving around your object with objects like this when you're painting, uh, because sometimes you're painting flat against an area. So you've got your viewport and you're flat on and you're painting away uh, and you don't realize that the geometry pushes out slightly and then your um, painting can look all skewed and odd, especially when you've got uh, the viewer node set up, which is an emission. So you don't see any shading. If you need to see the shading, then you go back to the principal BSDF. I do talk about that in other videos, but it's about having the node wrangler installed and then you can just click uh, control shift left click on either the principled BSDF or your texture and you'll get uh, either a sort of shaded view or a flat view. I much prefer to work in flat view because that's the final outcome. You can see there I was highlighting the tops of the bricks so where they jut out there was sort of a highlight of this catching the sun and now I'm going in with some shading. I've changed the color slightly of my brush as well giving it a purpley feel uh, so it's just giving it that, that contrast and uh, saturation in the shadows, which you often have. And that's obviously in the base of um, ridges and areas. And now it's really starting to work as a sort of rocky outposty thing. It's difficult to call this a mountainside really, isn't it? Because it's not exactly big, but I'm assuming it's sort of like part of a mountainside. <laughs> it's the idea anyway. Uh, it makes sense in games, doesn't it? You get little objects like this. I do like the concept art, I think it looks great. So just building up the shadows now and building up a bit of detail, as you can see, I'm being a bit more careful with my brush strokes, a bit more, not much, uh, but a little bit more. And that's uh, helping me to bring out these creases. 
it's always difficult as well to know how far to go uh, with the detail because uh, it's not in game but uh, this is probably as close as would be to the object and it's unlikely would be even this close and it's being viewed on a mobile so I could spend a lot more time getting this nice and realistic uh, but that's not really what I'm being paid for as such so I'm only being paid a certain amount uh, for a certain level of detail so you have to be careful not to cross that line as well otherwise your time is just being wasted in a sense but you can see I'm going fairly fine with some of these cracks just to give it a element of detail uh, but again it, if you moved in really close you would see that it's extremely rough as you can really sort of see my brush strokes at the moment I do smooth them out a bit more a bit later uh, but just these little bits of detail in there just so it doesn't look too blank and uniform I suppose it's the character elements really Obviously my brush is a lot harder and smaller than it was when I was doing the bigger details. And I'm using the multiply and screen brushes for the highlights and crevices at this point. I think earlier on I actually used just a dark colour and a light colour, but at this point I'm using the multiply and screen brush. Always move away from your object and then move back in because that distance is really important because that again is where the model is going to be seen from so I'm always moving out thinking what does that look like from a distance this bit's a bit more tricky because I've left the actual outpost structure in there so it will actually be shaded eventually and um, I'm taking that into account but I'm just for the moment uh, just building it up as if it's just a, uh, an entire sort of rock face without that outpost in there so the building would obviously cast shadows on these areas. So I've gone in with a fair bit of the shading and now I'm going back to the highlights and thinking very carefully about now what the structure is looking like because it changes all the time in a sense. As soon as you put another black line in, you've got another crevice, so you've got another highlight. So I'm always going around thinking which bit's going to be sticking out now and then just go around, add a few more in. Uh, where there's blank spots or where I think it's a bit too uniform, then I'll add some more shading in. Back to the multiply brush now, much bigger for the bottom area of shading. Uh, so you can see right in those crevices, it just needed a bit more contrast between the light parts and dark parts. So I started going in with a darker brush and big brush there. Back to the detail here, where there was not so much sort of variation in the texture. And at that point I thought I'd try a dent, a sort of hole. I do again like to try something new, something different each time I paint. Uh, so I thought, well, I haven't put a big dent in there anywhere. I'm not sure it really worked actually. So um, I think I sort of blurred that out a bit later on. Around where it hits the actual structure, I started putting in some lines there and where it hits the base as well. Uh, that will probably be quite dark. Uh, usually have sort of grass and things up against it um, but in this case I think it's just a texture but I'm giving that, that sort of illusion now I'm trying to really separate the the dents in the rock uh, so I don't feel like it feels denty enough so going in with a darker brush I may have gone a bit too far here I feel like I did but it, it seemed to work in the end and it um, all looks nice I feel uh, but it just possibly a little bit overdone with some of the areas of uh, shading. It's quite tricky because they are putting one light in the scene, a sort of sun lamp. Uh, so when that comes in, it usually helps you a little bit uh, with some of the areas of shading. But most of it I'm having to fake in terms of lighting. So close in you can see my brush strokes. And I'm getting a bit more detail in here as you can see. But uh, further away it looks alright. And like I say, that's, it's important not to go too far, otherwise you'll be spending too much time. Uh, and that's, again, not what I'm being paid for as such. You can see the color variation here as well, and it's working for me. Anyway, I, th I feel it works, uh, that uh, you must vary your uh, color a lot because the rock will pick up 
uh, reflections from around the place, but also rock isn't just grey. Uh, it does have a fair bit of colour to it when you really analyse it. You can see that sort of hole there. It doesn't quite work, does it? It's, uh, it adds variation, and that's a good thing, but uh, it didn't quite work for me. So I'm going up to about 600% now, uh, just because the finer detail is a uh, much slower process. Uh, but you can roughly see what I'm doing. I'm being very sort of squiggly with my lines because it's a rock face. Uh, but just catching those highlights, getting my brushwork a bit more tidy. And you can see now we're a bit closer in. It looks a bit more detailed, doesn't it, rather than uh, the rough, uh, dirty brush strokes that I had earlier. So it's still going in, thinking about where the shading hits, where the light parts are, making sure there's enough contrast so it has that depth without too much lighting help from the program. It's probably worth saying that this is all on a 512 by 512 map, which you can see in the bottom corner there. I work on a 1000 by 1000, um, so it's the normal sort of size, and then it will be squashed down. So this will look a little bit more blurry in game, but obviously it's on a mobile screen, so it's probably going to look similar, really. But you can see this is only taking up a small aspect of my uh, texture, which you can see down in the bottom left there. And it's only, um, I would say, about a third, maybe a bit less than a third, in fact. Uh, so I've got to fit all the other objects in here as well. At this point, I'm adding a bit of a character and detail. So a few little dents and crevices. And really highlighting the area where the other objects jut into the rock face. So some finer details now. Like I say, don't go too far with these when you're doing mobile assets. Uh, but I, again, I, I think there's a 70-30 rule, isn't there? Uh, so 30% um, of the fine details and then 70% uh, is the sort of boring makeup, as it were. Uh, and I think that sort of applies here as well. So uh, about 30% of the rock faces has sort of fine details to give it that character, make it look like a rock face. So there we have it, the finished model. You can see the entire model here, of course, but you can see the rocky structure or cliff face there as well and how it integrates into the scene. If you enjoyed this, then take a look at the other playlists. There's ones on hand painting, there's more on Atlas Empires, and there's lots of free courses. So thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.